Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to take you on a tour of my garden, my vegetable garden, and I will be showing you what is growing now, what is petering out, and then what will be bearing fruit soon. I hope you enjoy it. And as always, if you do, like, comment, and subscribe. Happy gardening. Looking ahead into the garden, the first thing you see is this new arbor that we added this year. We added it to contain the two climbing roses which are in either side of the entrance. The first thing you encounter is a set of cattle panel trellises built to house tomatoes and beans. This year we're growing tomatoes on there. We grow a variety of tomatoes from slicers to cherry tomatoes as well as paste tomatoes for sauce. We're growing a total of 32 plants this year with about 15 different varieties. Um, we enjoy tomatoes in a variety of dishes, so it's good to grow enough to can, freeze, as well as using. To the left, as you enter the garden, you encounter our tires that I use to grow my herbs. Now, I know that there are other options out there, but when I built this garden, I didn't have the finances to use something else and we'll be upgrading at a later time. I grow a variety of herbs, including basil, Thai basil, sage, thyme, three different varieties. To the right, I have a bed with corn, rhubarb, as well as cabbage. The next tire that you come to has this huge parsley plant that I grow for our swallowtail caterpillars, as well as fennel and dill, because we have a quite the large population here, so I like to feed them. I also grow chives, both garlic and onion chives, for compound butter, as well as for cooking. In the next tire, I had just seeded some cilantro, and you see sprouts there. This is a variegated mint that I'm trying this year for the first time. I grow quite a variety of herbal teas, uh, mints, uh, basils that I use for tea, lemongrass and so forth. And so we don't drink coffee, but we're big tea drinkers. Looking across the garden, we get to our potatoes. This year I'm growing potatoes in nine different grow bags. And what I typically do is harvest them as the leaves die. And then I harvest as I need. If they start to rot in the bags, I will harvest all at once. But I typically don't. Um, I have five of the tall grow bags and four of the wider, shorter ones. I also grow a wide variety of peppers. Peppers are, seem to be something that does remarkably well in my garden. I also grow fruit trees, including this Glen mango tree, which is hardy in my zone, which is 7B. I have five different pomegranate trees, which I've been keeping in the vegetable garden to help them get established before planting them in our orchard. Uh, they are doing quite well. And so in the fall this year, the plan is to permanently put them in the orchard. In addition to pomegranates, I grow Meyer lemon, Eureka lemon, Persian lime. I have a starfruit tree, an avocado tree. It's a Joey avocado, and there's also an Ulala avocado. Peppers that I grow include scorpion pepper and ghost peppers to make jerk sauce. Being from Jamaica, we make jerk sauce each year. And then I have 
serrano peppers, Anaheim peppers, jalapenos, cayenne pepper, as well as banana peppers, bell peppers, snacking peppers, just to name a few. Here I'm showing you a cayenne pepper plant fully loaded with loads of cayenne pepper. My husband loves cayenne pepper on his food, so what I do is I grow it, I dehydrate it, and then make cayenne pepper powder that he uses on his food. Also make red pepper flakes. Looking ahead, you will see the sugar cane that I'm growing. In grow zone 7B where I live, sugar cane is a perennial. So each year after I harvest, I put the root in the greenhouse to overwinter. I also grow comfrey to use as green fertilizer in the garden. Make a tea and then use it to fertilize things in the garden. This year, I tried growing sweet potatoes and corn together, and I will say they did very well. It saved space. And as you can see, my corn is tasseling. Leaving the corn, we go to the Brussels sprouts. As you can see from the leaves, the cabbage worms were having a field day but they left the sprouts alone and so giving them a few more weeks to fatten up and then we're going to harvest and have a nice meal of them. I'm always asked why I grow so many flowers in the garden and my response is always how do you expect the pollinators to show up and work and you don't provide them food. My center flower garden in the, gar in the garden is for pollinators. It has bee balm, uh, daisies, tons of zinnias usually, and you can see all those green sprouts on the ground. Those are all zinnias in the making. It also has echinacea, black-eyed Susan, Shasta daisies, catnip, um, black, uh, excuse me, sweet williams, and a host of other plants that bloom at different stages, different seasons. I also added a bird bath for our nice little friends. Here I'm showing you my onion harvest. I grew white onions and this is the harvest that I had. I've not processed it yet, but I pulled it shortly before filling, filming this video. Here I have a watermelon plant. I have four watermelon plants planted on this little slope and I'm gonna allow the vines to run in this area out of the walkway in the garden. The watermelon that I'm growing this year is Sugar Baby. Very sweet and compact. To the right, I have a raised bed filled with lemongrass. Once again, I use it for cooking as well as for teas. In Jamaica, we call it fever grass, so I grow it for when we are sick. In this bed, I have Jamaican sorrel, or it's also called hibiscus. I'm also growing kabucha squash, which in Jamaica we call pumpkin. The next raised bed that you encounter, I'm growing eggplant as well as a pepper plant that's called flavor pepper. It has the taste of a scotch bonnet pepper, but none of the heat. It has zero scovels, so it's a good one if you have to cook for children. I'm also growing stevia, turmeric, and ginger. I also have ginger and turmeric elsewhere. This was just extra. I grow a couple of different hardy citruses, kumquats, Persian lime, eureka lemon, as well as Meyer lemon. Meyer lemons are not hardy in my area, but they have done quite well in the greenhouse over the winter months. The next area we come to is a bed where I have planted edos or taro root for the last few years, but this year they're just not doing as well as they had in previous years. And you know what? You can't win everything every year, so I'm okay. I'll call it a wash this year and replant them again next year and see what they do. I may amend the soil some. Here I'm showing you my Malabar spinach. This Malabar spinach has a life of its own and it's a very, 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 very 
good plant to grow if you live in a hot climate. It is a type of spinach that loves the heat. It grows on a vine and you harvest the leaves and eat those. That's uh, Swiss chard as well as baby bok choy in this bed. We get to another bed that has more corn and then some cantaloupe to the left. And then this is the bed that has the ginger as well as the turmeric in it. I grow it along this fence line and it does quite well. You can see the turmeric over here is just doing fabulously. In the green stalk, I grew different mustards. This is my okra plants here. And I'm growing six different varieties. There's a pink one, a burgundy one, heavy hitter, a star-shaped one. They're very nice. But in the green stalk, I grew mustard and then the cabbage worms got to them. I try not to use any pesticides in my garden or any sprays, even organic. So once the bugs find the plant, I generally just pull them out. Here I have zucchini and squash in this raised bed. And as you can see, there are loads of blossoms on there and we are going to have quite the harvest. Looking forward to it, it is my husband's favorite vegetables. So I tend to cook those a lot. I harvest and freeze as well as use them in dishes throughout the growing season. In the garden, I have two Arbiquina olive trees and they have gotten quite large since I purchased them. They are also hardy in zone 7B. The next bed is a bed my husband planted and it has flowers for beauty, Cuban oregano, as well as five different pepper plants, purple peppers, yellow bell peppers, green bell peppers, snacking peppers, and I think a red bell pepper as well. You see how large those plants are? And they're beginning to put on blossoms. So next to this container, I've planted a Little Miss Figgy fig tree. It is a fig tree that stays small. So it, you know, it's compact. Figs are hardy in my zone. So I've planted it directly in the garden. And as you can see, it has figs. This bed had more curly kale, but I've harvested it all and have left this one cabbage collared plant to go to seed. And it has dropped some seeds and has reseeded already for the fall. Here I'm showing you cucumelon plants that I started from seed, direct sowed, and they are beginning to take off. I love cucumelons. I'm the only one who does. So I eat them while they're in season and then forget about them. We're not big pickle family, so we don't really pickle much of what we grow. On this next cattle panel trellis, I have cucumbers and I'm growing pickling cucumbers as well as straight cucumbers. And we like to use them while they're fresh in the garden. And then that's it, we don't pickle any. This year, I added some raspberry plants to the garden, double gold and fall gold, both of which are peach colored raspberries, and they're extremely sweet and delicious. So if you're considering adding a colored raspberry, this is, um, these, these are two that I highly recommend. Our next bed is a combination of greens. I had sown some Swiss chard and some lachinato kale as well as more Cuban oregano. We also call Cuban oregano broadleaf thyme. In the garden, there are four bee hotels and a couple of them are actively being used. Here are some lettuce that I grew from seed and more Cuban oregano. That's a horseradish plant in that pot, which should be harvested this season, as well as more Swiss chard and kale. We next arrive at Zucchini Alley. There are four zucchini plants in here and they're doing quite well. Zucchini bread, 
vegetables soup, as well as stir fries and just any way you normally eat zucchini is how we use it. Here is a squash plant, crooked neck squash. Once again, I grow so much because my husband loves it and I like to be able to have it in the off season. I have three tomato plants that are slicers on this one cattle panel. Um, so when you look into the garden, you see these luscious tomatoes hanging there. Can't wait to eat them. Here's my Persian lime tree. And this year we only have one lime. Last year it was fully laden. I harvested quite a bit. I have more sweet potatoes growing there. The first sweet potato bed that I showed you, that's Japanese sweet potatoes. This bed that I just showed you is American sweet potatoes. Here's my kumquat tree, laden with kumquats. As well as my Eureka lemon tree. Doesn't have not one lemon on there. It had tons of blooms and then they all fell off. And sometimes that happens. I try not to sweat the small stuff. I feel like with after what we've been through, I don't make a big deal about much of anything anymore. There's Life is too short, and there are bigger things in life I feel to worry about than whether or not I get a lemon this year versus next year. Here are a couple of zucchinis in the making. Nice blossoms. Looking forward to the harvest. That's part of the gardening that I love is the harvest because it's, you know, all your hard work is showcase, is rewarded. Looking again into the tomato tunnel. This bed, we planted a couple of determinate tomatoes, but they're behaving like indeterminate. They're vining way more than was um, thought. And so we had to get creative with the trellising. These are slicing tomatoes as well as um, some Roma tomatoes. My husband and Kevin planted these when he was here. As you can see, they're doing quite well and the plants are healthy. Loads more blossoms to come. That concludes our garden tour. Thank you so much for joining me today as I did a walkthrough of the garden. I'm sure the garden would evolve over the season and I will take you along as we go. Thanks so much again and happy gardening.